Uh, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting live. Um, and today's topic, we're going to be talking about the power of presence. The power of simply being here and now. And how we can fall back into our natural state and have access to the power of the being and operate from this place. So what we're going to do is let's just do a simple meditation and this meditation is also going to be uh, directing you to falling back into the power of presence, that which is always with you. And it's not something that you have to create. It's not something that you need to get to because it's your true nature and you're already it. This is simply a recognition, a recognition of a place that is already here but because it's so simple and so available and we have been residing in this place all of our lives, we simply miss it. So I'm going to try to point out to this place and hopefully you get a glimpse of it because uh, by getting a glimpse of it or tabbing into it, uh, you will get a very good idea of what's available for you and, and a part of yourself which is extraordinary, a part of yourself that is eternally here. And this part of you has not been born. It will never die. It's always present. However, in order to get to this part of yourself, in order to recognize it, to, uh, it becomes an every moment recognition. And every moment that it's shining out of you is there is one a barrier that needs to uh, be taken over and accomplished. And that barrier is the mind. The fact that the mind keeps you outside of this moment and continuously is taking you to the past or to the future. So it doesn't allow you to fully incorporate and dive into this moment and get a good glimpse of who you are. Get a, get a, clear glimpse of your own vastness, of that power, of that being which is here, that you're a part of it. So I'm going to talk about this more. Uh, let's just do a meditation for now and then after the meditation we're going to get into it and you're welcome to ask me your questions. So what you want to do is simply sort of step back within yourself. You just step, you take one step back and as if you're sitting on the edge of your chair and you're about to get up and walk, walk away and you decided to not to go away and now you're just gonna step back and dive into the chair and just really sit at your chair and relax. So it's kind of like from this place that you're about to get up and go because that's what the mind does. It continuously in this place of wanting to go somewhere. So from that place you fall back into yourself. So let's do that. You fall back into yourself. You take a deep breath.
just allow yourself without trying, pushing anything, forcing anything. Just sink, sink in to this place within yourself. And as you're just simply sinking within yourself, you may want to trace your thoughts back to the origin of where they come from, to their origin. Where do they come from?
slowly, slowly come back. here Your expectation for me to say something, your waiting for me to speak, keeps the mind at the edge. Uh, what it does is you can, you're not going into the past or you're not going to the future. You're simply present here waiting for me to speak and that forces the mind to be here even though there's nothing being said in stretches of time or there may be pauses that I stop and I don't talk yet you're available waiting to see what's going to come out. So that forces you to be here in this moment. It's this moment right now here which holds everything that we're looking for all the secrets of universe, the mystery that we are seeking to discover, it's always here in this moment. It's all here. It's all right now. But the mind has a tendency because it's conditioned from childhood, from the time we were born until today, the, our mind is conditioned. So it's always projecting into the future in another time. So here is not good enough. Here is not complete. Here is not vast. Yet, all of our spiritual experiences always happen here. All of the realizations we go through and breakthroughs happen from here. And if you understand the vastness of here, of how to relax into it, dive into it, kind of settle into here. If you can just take a deep breath and ah, and you're sitting on your couch and now you can just let go.
in here. And you may just look around at your place, your house, your apartment. You may just look around and you may discover things you've had for years sitting in front of you, but you haven't seen them. There may be all kinds of different objects, paintings, drawings, statues, pictures that you have surrounded yourself with, but you haven't looked at them for a long time. You haven't noticed them. And in here, when you disconnect yourself from what is going on in the mind, all of a sudden there is this, you discover the vastness. You discover something which is far more valuable but it's very subtle, it's extraordinarily, but still very ordinarily, because it's here all the time. But it, it is at incredible value. because there's vastness to it. The mind can't give it any value because it's beyond the mind. The mind can't understand it. Because it's in the absence of the mind. It's something in the background of everything. Extremely simple. completely reachable. It's in the very background, in the fabric of everything, our being. Very, very clear. Vast. It's timeless. And it's where you are, your home is. That's where it's the very seed of the soul, of your being. It's where your being coming from. And it's not even, it's even beyond even the word saying here and now. It's even beyond that. Because here and now, it is a representation. It's a way of referring, a point, it's a point of reference to something that it's impossible to refer to because it's never been anything else. It's the only thing it's ever been. How do you point out to something which has always been here? And naturally you, you miss it because 
your mind is conditioned to what comes and what goes. So you're blindfolded by what comes and what goes. You have a strong attachment to things that are appearing and disappearing. And you're very invested in it. Huge investment. We are so invested into what is going on in the world, what is going on in our politics, our economy, our country, the borders, the politics of it, the, the story, the um, sports, we're so attached to these things, we're so invested into it. It's so important to us. It's my country. It's my election. It's, it's the future. It's what's going to happen to us. You're so invested into it. It's so important for you. It's so real. It's our forests, it's our waters, it's our animals, it's our planet, it's our planet is being destroyed. I have to do something about it. Everything is so important. You're so passionate for you, for you. It's your passionate. You're so passionate to it that you are willing to go to war and kill and get killed. It's to that degree. It's interesting that most of us, most humanity go through lifetimes. Not just one lifetime, life, lifetimes. And keep missing. Keep missing the very truth of life. Keep going through this cycle, living every day, being in contact with life, being in now, yet completely missing what you're in and the vastness of it because the mind is conditioned to miss it and it's very passionate about it and it will come up with all kinds of justifications great reasons logic to miss to miss this simply here this moment, missing this moment.
and the vastness that this moment offers. But the it's not like you've never tasted it or you've never been a part of it. You all go to the nature When you're by yourself, you go to the nature, you go somewhere very beautiful that you love. And that place, let's go, you go on a vacation, you go to Canary Islands or you're in Hawaiian Islands or somewhere very pristine and beautiful. And the nature reflects back to you this part of yourself. So it kind of forces you to dive into the moment. And you kind of disconnect from your story, whatever the story is, whether it's an election coming or if it's a, it's the uh, COVID-19 or what, whatever is the story, you disconnect from the story or your family or you're going through divorce or your partner's cheating on you or doesn't want to be with you anymore or you're losing one of you're losing the custody of your children or whatever is the story that the mind is very engaged with that story because the mind is always engaged with things that come and go and this is what you're missing this is what we're missing, of falling back into this place, which is here always. And when you go to the nature, you go to somewhere beautiful, it's pristine, beautiful beaches, mountains, beautiful ocean, lake, desert, whatever that is. And you're in this place and you just ah, unwind. You just relax into this place, into the vastness of the desert, of the ocean. And you dive into it. And then what happens is the mind gets out of the way and you completely feel the vastness. You dive into it. And you're in this place till so you get in a plane and you fly back from Hawaii to wherever you live. And then the misery comes back. Because you allowed yourself to be in here and now into the vastness of the presence. It was a conditioned, conditional vastness. Because you're so much relating it to something that comes and goes. So even that part should have a beginning and an end. Because we simply don't have the awareness that that is always here. So we're relating to that similar, similarly to the way we relate everything else to. It's got a duration. It's going to come and go. So you go on your vacation. You go to this beautiful, ideal place. You're completely one with existence and yourself and then the week one week travel ends and you come back and you come back to your miserable self and have all your problems come back and suffering comes back again and naturally you're relating it that if one day I retire and I have enough money or I can create a situation to live there in that place, then I will be experiencing oneness all the time and vastness. 
That's where the mind associates it with. But that's not true. The reality of it, the truth of it, is if you have awareness and you have work on yourself and you come to the recognition of the truth of who you are, the truth of who you are, and you have wor worked on yourself, that's where self-awakening mastery comes. You have self-awakened and mastered your mind that you recognize very clearly that this is a product of the mind and it's been over ruling everything and it's been your master all of your life denying you of what is your na natural inheritance and you're being denied from it because you simply have no training no clue zero I would say clue on how to deal with it. Of being the victim of this mind all of your life. When I say zero, I really mean it. Because you have no idea what you're missing. You have no idea how vast this moment is, how complete it is. That here, right now, no matter where you are, no matter what is going on in the utter world, you can tap into that vastness of being sitting on your couch, in your living room, being anywhere in the world. and dive into the totality of the presence of this moment and the vastness and drinking from the nectar of life. And completely being indifferent to what comes and what goes. But this is an addiction that human mind, humans are so addicted, we're so addicted to the drama, we're so addicted to what comes and goes. We're to we're so addicted to the next election. We're so addicted to the next story that's going to come, the next era that's going to come. I need to know. I need to know what's going to happen. I need to put voice my opinion into it. I need to make a change. It's such an investment because this investment, it relates to suffering and you're just not ready to let go of your suffering. You're, you're addicted to it. Unless you come to this point in your life, you recognize that you literally have an addiction to suffering. 
there's nothing I can do for you. Because you're not let, ready to let it go. You grew up with it all your life. You're so familiar with it. It's part of your life. That what's going to happen if I'm not suffering, I can't imagine life without suffering. Unconsciously. Yet, we come together. You enter into this unified field of oneness, unified field of presence, of love. It's so vast. It's enormously vast. It's so powerful that your mind has to submit that there is no room here for your mind to do any of its stuff. So what happens is when the moment you come to this, you catch this field, it contract, you get contracted. It overwhelms your mind. And the presence is so powerful of this field that is created that you catch it, you get contracted. It's just simply, if you're in a room with three other people who have a cold or a flu and they're all coughing and sneezing, so you're going to catch, you get a, you're going to contract their cold. Same thing, the power of silence is so powerful. It's beyond anything else because it's the very truth. It's the fabric of who you are, the presence, the presence. It's Her Majesty, the Supreme Being. It's the big kahuna. This is the boss. The boss of all bosses. So when you come in touch with that, there is no mind. The mind just submits. So what happens is the moment you touch it, you fall back into this to yourself, you come back to this deep place of silence and bliss, and you fall back, it's like, wow, it slows down, and you go, wow. And peace takes over, silence takes over. Love takes over. Because it's, it's the very fabric of your own being. The presence. The vastness of the presence is in that moment that you pull back, in that moment that you come in touch with it, in that moment that there's an opening, a little hole opens up, and the light pierces through and it touches, and you recognize that. So even though a part of you, the mind, is deeply invested into the suffering, because it's really into what comes and goes, but this other part of you cannot resist. When it comes across the power, it comes across silence. 
the mind will come and do its thing, you know, it will do its jumping jacks. But what I'm trying to do is what I'm trying to point out to you is what you're looking for, what you're yearning for is here within your own self right now in this moment. All you have to do is kind of kick back. Just settle in it. Chill out and disengage from the mind. It's like relaxing. What do you have to do to relax? You get home at the end of the day from a long day work, interactions with your children, your family, whatever, is, whatever you've been dealing with. At the end of the day, you want to relax. So you take your shoes off and you put your feet up and you just relax. But what do you have to do to do that? Pay attention to it, what I would like you to do. Pay attention in what do you do to relax? How much effort does it require you to relax? Is relaxing a phenomena that doesn't, does require energy? Or it's a natural phenomena that happens on its own accord? Let's take a look at it. What do you do? What do you have to do to relax? You're really tired. You get home. It's the end of the day. You had a long day. You take your shoes off. You put your comfortable jammies on. You go lie down on your bed or the sofa. You turn on the, a, a movie or music or something you want to hear or watch. And you pour yourself a glass of wine or juice or whatever. And you're chilling out and and you're relaxing. What do you have to do to relax? Is that an effort? Or it's a natural state that happens? You're really tired. You don't want to sleep. You want to lie down on the couch and just relax. You may not even want to read anything or listen to anything. You just want to be quiet by yourself. So you kick back, you relax. Maybe you have your pet, your cat, dog on your, on your chest and you're rubbing him. But you just want to relax. You don't want to do anything. What do you have to do to do that? It's pretty much zero energy. Because you naturally fall into that place. Everybody does that. Every single human being at the end of the day, no matter how energetic they are, no matter how much they have accomplished, no matter how much they're involved with the world affairs, because it's very important, the world, to them, at the end of the day, at the final stage, they just relaxing. They have to. They must do. Otherwise, it's impossible to stay alive if you don't fall back into your natural state, into the reservoir of energy. You have to fall back into natural state. And your natural state is not engaged with anything. It's not involved with anything. But you're missing that.
it's overruled. We don't pay attention to it. We don't consider it of value. Because you're not in Hawaii. You're not somewhere else. Because you're... No one told you this has spiritual value to it. Because it's your natural state. You always have it. It's always there. But you don't realize in this place that you fall back into and you disconnect and you tap into the vastness of the being. Now, if you have worked on yourself and learn to self-awaken and master your mind when the awareness comes and you start doing the work, then that work is going to help you to recognize this natural state and implement the natural state more often recognizing it that those are the moments that you are in complete oneness with everything. And you're in this place. And finally the mind slows down or goes away. And what's there in the absence of the thinking mind? It's just silent. Then a lot of times we fall asleep, we wake up the next day, the mind is all refreshed, it's ready to go. What do you do? You start listening to the world's news, and then what happens? Everything comes back. Those few people on this planet of Earth who freed themselves from this cycle they finally got freed from the cycle of suffering while they were living they came to feel full realization, self-realization and freedom. They mastered their own mind. They came to the mastery of the mind. And the mastery of the mind wasn't by positive thinking or positive visualization. That's not how they mastered it. They learn how to separate themselves, to separating themselves from that which comes and goes. It was a recognition 
of that which doesn't change, recognizing that within themselves and the attention went into that direction, recognizing that part and recognizing that that's the only real thing. Hence, anything else that comes and goes is not real. Realizing that the mind, the thoughts, do not exist. They're not real. We give it so much importance to our minds, yet it just doesn't even exist. It's some random thoughts appear and disappear, and we take an ownership of it. But when you fall into your own, pre in the presence, of the vastness of being, you hear, and if you have your own eyes closed, you can't even locate yourself because you don't even know if you have a body or not because it's unidentifiable. You cannot identify your body. There is sensations you have your eyes closed, where is your body? If you touch, don't touch yourself, you have your eyes closed, you can't find the boundaries of your body. You can experience some sensations. And in the meantime, if you are just here, you have your eyes closed and you're looking. Where are you located? Where is your place in your body? Are you here? Are you here? Where are you located? Where is your location really? So you get even fooled by the body because you think it's real. But when you go in deep meditation, your body disappears too. It's not there. Because your body falls into the category, category of things that appear and disappear. You see, the problem is that we're not really taught to look for that which doesn't change. When you start to recognize and identify that which doesn't change as the only real thing, then everything else that changes becomes unreal. So why should I invest my time on things that come and go? Why would I waste my time investing on stuff, whatever they are? They all come and go.
Anybody has any questions? And if you want, you can write on the chat box. Either wave at me and I unmute you, or you can write on the chat box. Or unmute yourself and we can talk. Hi, Leslie. How are you doing? Yeah? Nice seeing you. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> I'm doing really well. Happy to hear that. Yeah. Because of orienting to this space. Say that again. And Only because of being oriented to the vastness of this space. Yes. Whenever I'm oriented to here, I'm so happy. I'm so joyful. Yeah. I filled up with love. And as I am doing it more and more, and I am attached to what's going on in the country, but I'm withdrawing my attention more and more. Like, I, I don't watch the news in the way that I was so addictively. Or, I've never really been into news or politics in my life. But over the last four years, I've been a junkie. Because I was sitting on the edge of my seat watching this spy movie unravel, and I saw it from the beginning. What everybody's seeing now, I saw four years ago. So I went on to Twitter to add my voice. If you know, if you see something, say something. <laughs> In New York, we were deluged with that poster after 9-11. If you see something, say something. And I thought, you know, I do see something, and I think I need to say something. And I'm just going to say what I see. So I do. And it's been um, a terrible challenge for me because I know the non-dual reality of this innermost place. So I've been in this conflict. So I appreciate so much coming to these weekly meetings because it's sort of got me back on track. Great. I was trying. I was trying to find my way back, and but my mind was so stirred up by everything. So like. These coming here and anchoring myself every week has been a blessing. So I, I really thank you for that. And um, it's not, this is not the only channel through which I'm receiving this. It's coming to me from a, numerous different channels, partly because it's coming from within also. And, you know, so I'm just, instead of thinking I have to do something to get to it, I'm just, letting go and relaxing and trusting it to unfold and to guide, as it has always done for me. Whenever I've learned here in my life, because I was taken into this place profoundly at 19 years old and then told to find my way back. <laughs> right. So 50 years later, <laughs> and a long and winding journey. <laughs> I'm, f I'm finding my way back, as are many of us, and thank you so much for what you make available so beautifully, so generously for all of us. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. I'm glad, I'm glad you're getting it. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. That is important. 50 years is nothing in comparison to 50,000 years. So... <laughs> So this is not a bad time on planet Earth. This is a golden opportunity for those of us who are seeking awakening and are in a process of this transition to the fifth dimensional consciousness. So because we're attached to things 
to be the same as they were before, like our planet, our world, we want things to be the same. And it doesn't matter that the same may suck, it may be horrible for a lot of people. But basically, it's like, okay, you know, I have a relatively a cush life and I get to travel and do my thing. And yes, I voice, I voice my opinion every once in a while, but I want it the same way. I'm happy with it. And that is changing too. That's crumbling and, and being destroyed. And who knows what's going to be next. Because it doesn't really matter what's going to come next. It won't make any difference. It could be an amazing thing. It could be a horrible thing. It won't make any difference. If I don't do the work. If I don't learn and find that which I'm looking for within myself. It doesn't matter what's going to happen in the other world because I'll be struggling with same problems I was struggling with before. So the other world will be another distraction. What we want to do is we want to use the other world, what is going on in the world right now, as an opportunity to work on ourselves and an opportunity for transformation and put our energy and our might, whatever that is, into the inner work, making the inner work priority. The more you get advanced, this is a great time to work on yourself to get advanced. It's a golden opportunity that's been created by existence, forcing us into this situation. And in the meantime, has given us the means, mean that we have the internet. We can still have access to the teachings. And our other distractions in some ways are taken away. Or it's turning ugly. Or whatever is going on in the other world. My suggestion to you is disconnect from what is going on in the other world. Yeah, you live in this planet. You still have to go out there and buy your food or exercise and drive and do whatever you have to do. But don't pay any attention to what is going on there. Bring your attention inwards. Religiously, vigorously work on yourself to be quiet. Help yourself so you can dive into this other realm within yourself. The vastness. And you will see for yourself that when majority of people on the planet are suffering, they're worried, they're deeply in fear worry, anxiety, insecurity. You will be having hours of hours of being blissed out in this place within yourself because you discovered the space inside yourself. You discovered the vastness of this moment that here in this moment it's perfect here, right now. You have self-awakened and you have mastered your mind. 
because you're not giving in to the mind. You have arisen by your appearance. You finally show up. And the mind is your servant because you have awakened. You're here. You're present. Ha! Ah, I'm here. So you're looking. Ah! Where is the mind? What is the mind? Who's the mind? The king is here. Who are these rebels? Who's opposing the king? The king has come and sitting on his seat and is like, where are they? Where is the mind? And all of a sudden, there is no mind. You can examine it for yourself. Take a look. Look inside. Look inside your mind. Where are your thoughts? Close your eyes, bring your attention here, and take a look. Where are you? Where is the mind? Show, show yourself to me. When you are here and you're present there is no thoughts there is no mind the mind has no power it loses its power and yet I understand for a lot of us we can't be in this place that I'm talking about on daily and moment to moment basis well that's why we have the academy. That's why we have different retreats and workshops. Is to learn to unclutch from this lifetime conditioning. Because if you don't know where the enemy is, then you're blindsided. You get hit by it all the time. We have to identify where the problem is and how to overcome it. And a lot of times in our lives, we need support. We need help to identify the enemy within and how to overcome it. What's hunting you is a mind which is running loose. And is taking you to everywhere. And right now it keeps taking you into the future. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. Stock market is going to go up. It's going to go down. I'm going to lose my asset. Blah, 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 blah. I have to hang on to everything. Oh my God, I'm so scared. Let me buy some more food. What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen? Am I going to die? Are we all going to die? Are we all going to be mass murdered? Are we all going to blah, blah, blah? Fear, 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 worry, 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 anxiety, anxiety. That's what your mind does to you. But when you collect yourself and you come back to yourself and you take your seat and the king is here and sits on throne ah and all his commanders are behind him and the queen is sitting here and you say okay where is this mind bring him over here let me see who are these intruders so you wake up and you look your third eye is opened up you are looking where is it show me this mind and there is no mind it's only here. It's only this moment. There has never been a moment outside of this moment. This is the only moment that you have. 
You're acting as if there is something outside of here. All these years you've lived, you haven't learned that this is the only thing exist. This is the only thing ever existed. And this is the only thing ever will exist here, right now. All of your other concerns, they're not here. Unless you master this, you have mastered nothing. This is what you need to master. This is the only thing in this life you need to master. This is the only work you have to do. You're missing out. If you don't master this, you have mastered nothing. The rest is meaningless. You have lived a life, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, and you have accomplished nothing. Yeah, you made a lot of money, you have a lot of real estate, you got companies all over the world, you got a lot of different stuff, but you're still a slave. You don't get any degree up there. You have accomplished things in the world but you're still haunted by the mind. So you wasted your life. You wasted many of these and you still postpone. Even at this critical moment in, in our history, when there is an urgency, you're still missing it out. You're still not serious about it. You have no idea. You're still postponing it. This is the only thing to master. From the time we are born to the time we die, there's one accomplishment that we need to do in this life. To master our minds. To learn how to be here. Nothing else. Everything else is second or third or fourth secondary. It's not the priority. This is the only objective in this life. Because this is the only thing that leads you to freedom. Because once you accomplish this, it doesn't matter what goes on in the world. It doesn't matter what your finances are. It doesn't matter what the economy is. It doesn't matter what the weather pattern is. None of it matters anymore. You have mastered yourself. So any con other external conditions are become irrelevant. You are happy and vast and connected at all times. The entire universe bows at your feet. All the angels of, the, of the, all the different realms, they serve you. Yet you give this up and you want to be a beggar. when you can be the king. But of course, to come to the full realization, the truth of who you are, you have to work on it, of course. Because we got a thousand-year-old conditioning that we have to get over. But there is help here. You're not alone on your own.
master your mind and be free forever. So you're no longer subject to ups and downs of your emotions. So you learn how to be steady. You're always steady. Being emotionally steady is not boring. It's superior, far more superior than anything else that we have experienced in our lives. It's in a different level. Being free from fear, worry, and anxiety. Something that most human beings have never experienced in their lives and been hunted by it. Is a freedom beyond imagination. To be free. To be unaffected by everyday news. To be unaffected to get even the news that I have a stage 4 brain tumor and I have 3 months to live. Or getting the news that, I don't know, the country is invaded by whatever, or whatever is going to happen, that you have no attachment to it. You are in this place, here, in now, and you're drinking from the juices of this moment, the vastness of the moment. It's, you're so blissed out in this moment, because this is the only thing it is, that you absolutely have zero concern of any future projected possibilities of whatever is going to happen or may happen or whatever. You are free. You're free from the fear of death, the fear of old age, the fear of being broke, the fear of bankruptcy. You have freed yourself. You have no idea what that is like. You have no idea what this place is, how free this place is, how liberating it is. You tap into the hidden powers that are been inherited within you. You have inherited. They've been entrusted to you when you were born and you come to this planet. And your hidden power powers is your power of love. The vastness of love which is in your heart. You heard words of it. You have touched it here and there. But you don't know what it's like to live in that place 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Always the power of love shining to your heart. Continuously. You don't know what it's like. Where no fear has any place to enter or to touch it, to touch you. You have gone beyond all of that. You have gone beyond what is good and what is bad, what is right and what is wrong. You have evolved above all. Yet your body is in this world. 
You don't detach from this world as if you're no longer going to be living this world. You still enjoy the world, the life. But it's not conditional. Oh, well, they cut off the traveling. I don't get to travel anymore, so I don't have fun anymore. And my life is miserable. You find beauty in whatever si situation, circumstances that present itself to you, you're going to find beauty in that. You're going to love those moments, no matter what happens, no matter what is going on in the outer world. You are always steady and you're always deriving from the power of that, that's within yourself, that the love which inside you, that's your power place. That's the light that's coming from you. It's not conditional. It's constant and it's always there. I invite you to come and join me in this place because there is room for everybody. This is one of those things that the more you give to other people, the more you receive. It's not like the worldly materials that the more you give, the less you're going to have. This is the other way around. All right, we're coming to the end of our um, academy. Thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it. Our next academy is going to be next week. Uh, uh, for those of you who live in Scandinavia, uh, we uh, were going to change the time. We normally we were announcing that the academy is going to be from the 19 o'clock till 21, but now we're going to be announcing that it's going to be from 18 to 21 uh, Scandinavian time. So. Um, Thank you for a couple of you contacting me and letting me know. We kind of cut it late, but uh, I, guess, I guess you figured it out that the time has changed. It's kind of better for you in Scandinavia because it's going to be from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. rather than 7 to 9, right? Is that better for you or no? No? Some of you may like it, some of you may not. So what to do? Uh, also, I'm having a workshop. It's called Self-Awakening Mastery Workshop. It's a three-day workshop starting on Thursday the 13th. And in this workshop, I'm going to be emphasizing how you can master your mind, how you can take control and not be a victim of your mind, as well as 
receiving the tools of a part of that, a part of, of mastering the mind, besides the training, the teachings, and the watchfulness of the mind, is also to have the techniques and the meditations of how to raise your vibrations to a higher frequency and sustain the new vibrational frequency. That is the key. Because it does happen a lot of times that we do a workshop or a certain kind of work or we go on a vacation to a beautiful place and our vibration changes and we start vibrating from a higher frequency. However, we, when the workshop ends or we leave that place and we come back to our ordinary life, we fall back into the old pattern. So in this three-day three day workshop, my goal is to give you the tools and help you how you can sustain your new level of awareness so you don't fall back into the old patterns. And we're going to be working on that. So if you feel like joining us and signing up, go ahead and go to my website, which is um, info at zaratustra.tv. If you would like to contact me, uh, you can, I'm sorry, my website is zaratustra.tv and my email address is info at zaratustra.tv. I said it the other way around. Uh, also, if any of you, I still have one spot left for live training program. If anybody's interested to uh, jump, jump in and start the live training program, it's a private um, program that it's a tailor-made program that I make it specifically to your needs and it's about it takes a minimum of three months that we will be getting together and I'll be working on you and giving you homeworks and uh, it's very potent very powerful and uh, it's a powerful way of reaching your spiritual goals so if you're interested into private tutoring then contact me and then we set up a consultation appointment with you and then we go from there. I'm going to take one more student for, for this season uh, and then I close the enrollment and I don't know when is the next time I'm starting, maybe sometimes in February, I'm not sure. But for now I have room for one more person, so feel free to contact me. I look forward to seeing you next, uh, next Wednesday, sending you lots of love and light. Be well and stay in your heart. Always dive back into this place, no matter what happens. If you feel lost, just take a deep breath and just dive into this place. Come back to this place, put your hands on your heart and just tell yourself that all is well. In the center of your own self, all is very well. Nothing is wrong. Nothing is happening. When your mind becomes quiet and you come to the center of yourself, you will see for yourself that nothing is going on. Sending you lots of love. Namaste.